Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Blair Hampton and this is It's a Book, my YouTube channel where I discuss all things reading, writing, love of the craft, and my journey to becoming a self-published author. Today I want to catch you up on what I've been up to and why I haven't been recording. I've been very busy. Uh, we'll talk about the global pandemic that uh, is affecting everyone and everything. Uh, I'll let you know about some crafting projects that I have going on. And most importantly, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite genres, which is horror. So sit back, relax, grab something yummy to eat, and come on back. Hey, welcome back. So I wanted to touch bases with you. It's been a while since I've recorded. I've been very busy. Uh, I re-enrolled in school and the classes were kicking my butt and I really wanted to do well for a variety of reasons. So I had to take time away from working on this show for you guys and really concentrate on my studies. And I finished three courses. I'm finishing up my fourth one right now. Um, we're in the midst of this terrible global pandemic, uh, COVID-19. We have been on quarantine now as of this recording for about three months and it is a terrifying time. It is disproportionately affecting New Yorkers, which breaks my heart because it is my hometown. It is also disproportionately affecting people of color, black people and for obvious reasons that has me shook so lots of prayers to everyone um we're all dealing with this we're all in it together i know that there is not much as far as uh concrete solutions on what we should do or what we can do but just remember that as long as we stick together organize and try to come up with a plan we can we can beat this we can beat anything but um just prayers to everybody i am scared to pieces but we have to move forward so um in the hopes of like lifting spirits and kind of uh, taking our minds off of everything that's going on. I wanted to get back into my channel and give you updates on my project. I am currently working on the sequel to my debut novel, which is titled In Search of Shadows. The second book is really exciting to me. I love talking about New York and I love talking about all of the sights and sounds that kind of influence uh, me and I have gathered all of those experiences and tried to condense them enough to tell a cohesive story uh, centering on my protagonist, Danny, who is a 13 year old apprentice to his famous father, who is an inventor of unusual, sometimes magical objects. Uh, they have a shop in Westchester, New York, but their adventures take them all over the city. So if you haven't checked it out, again, the link is in my bio. I hope you do. And just come along with me for the journey. I have a lot of stuff in store. It's really exciting. I sent away my draft to my critique partner and I was just like, oh, this is a masterpiece. I'm just gonna, you know, do some minor edits once she sends me her notes back. And I started looking for a graphic designer to help me with the cover and come up with a concept and everything. And when I got those edits back, I was like, oh my gosh, back to the drawing board. I have the skeleton of a good story but I have to get the meat together so it can stick to the bones and really be exciting and engaging. So shout out to my critique partner because she just leads with grace and wisdom and she gives me positive feedback, uh, necessary criticisms, and I am really looking forward to the sequel being better than the first book and hopefully, just sharpening my skills as a writer and 
it's a process, but I, it's one that I love and it's full of research and I am committed to being the best author I can be. And that is objective and subjective, but I know what I have um, in my mind and I am attempting to take it from up here and apply it on paper in a way that is easy to understand. It's kind of hard to do that because I am inspired by art in the universe, uh, history, and to condense all of that into a young adult novel is a daunting task, but I love it and I wouldn't change it for anything. I was gifted with a singer serger a few Christmases ago by my mom and what a perfect time to pull it out and start trying to do something with it. I was very intimidated by it. Uh, if you're not familiar, it has like four spools of thread and they all work together to just really make clean, crisp edges. And I let it sit in a box for about a couple of years until I just pulled it out and said, well, no time like the present. I have been furloughed from work. So I've had a lot more time to do things that I love like editing and reading new books and crafting. So what better way to spend the time than to try to make some masks? Um, I'll put some pictures up on my social media so you can see what they look like, but they do look like they were handmade. And uh, they're kind of rough around the edges, but like any draft, you know, you just, keep working on the technique and stay focused and dedicated. And then maybe you'll have like a couture piece from Blair, okay? I do not care for too many horror novels that are geared towards an older audience. I find that they're too scary and too creepy, but I love the idea of reading horror books that are not super scary, but suspenseful and thrilling enough to appeal to children. So that is kind of my reasoning behind writing In Search of Shadows for middle graders. Um, I loved reading horror novels when I was a child. My mom used to take me to Highbridge Public Library in the South Bronx once a week where I would check out all of these books. And of course I love romance and like those teen novels, Judy Bloom, all of that good stuff. But I loved reading scary books. R.L. Stein, Christopher Pike, I love Goosebumps, Fear Street, anything about, anything about zombies, vampires, werewolves. I just sucked it up because it was tame but still had a little edge to it so that it made me kind of, you know, clutch my doll at night, but it wasn't enough to make me have nightmares. I remember um, when It debuted. Uh, it was based on, of course, the legendary novel by Stephen King. And this original uh, imagining of the story starred Tim Curry as Pennywise the Clown. And I remember seeing part one of the miniseries and I was petrified. I had to barricade myself in my room the next day and have the radio up loud. And you know, it's funny, I had a sewing machine. It wasn't like a real sewing machine. It was one of those ones that had markers instead of spools of thread and it stamped little designs onto fabric. I had gotten it for Christmas. So I was in my room working on that. Isn't it funny how like 30 something years later, I'm, I'm here sewing and talking about scary stuff again. But anyway, uh, going back into time in my room, sewing and listening to the radio, trying to drown out the sounds of whatever the heck my mom and sister were watching in the living room. I was petrified and it took me years before I could watch part two of the series. And I remember how scared I was that all of these kids were experiencing all of this trauma and these adults were oblivious to it. And I kind of always kept that in mind when I sought books out at the local library because I wanted to learn about people my age 
who were brave, resilient, and could stand up to zombies and vampires and werewolves and things like that because they all emulated qualities that I wanted to have. And growing up in the South Bronx, there were things that were super scary, you know, things that weren't mythical or they didn't have like, you know, roots in someone's imagination. Like the real world is a scary place. And I sought comfort in these books because I would apply the bravery and courage that the protagonist um, exhibited. And I, I, I kind of wanted to emulate that in real life. And now all these years later, as I write books, I try to embody that spirit. Horror is such a phenomenal genre to tell morality tales. There is nothing more poignant than the timeless story of good versus evil. And with In Search of Shadows, I really wanted to explore evil versus goodness by having it represented by a machine, something that ought not to be built, and how something that can have the potential to have great power and beauty can be turned around into something nefarious. And I wanted to show that no matter what your obstacles are, or no matter what scary things are lurking in the darkness, with perseverance, bravery, and chutzpah, you can overcome anything. And a lot of times we have to remember that even with all the horrific things that are going on, we have the power to be the protagonist in our own stories. So when I sit down and write, I try to make sure that my characters display these qualities where they may not always know the right path, but they are deeply tied into their purpose. In this case, Danny is aspiring to be a world famous inventor, just like his dad and just block out all of the noise, all of the scary things in the background, still be cautious, but don't ever lose sight of the end goal. Um, in this case, it's for Danny to fulfill his dreams of being a great scientist. And there's a lot of pitfalls along the way, but he just never loses hope. And we can always do that when we're scared. So it's important to kind of put that stuff into stories for children because you can use science fiction to just prove like the deepest, most profound beliefs about goodness and fighting for all the things that are worthwhile um, just with turning a page. So um i'm really excited about contributing to the genre